sir, is my screen visible? Yes. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. So as I said before, I'm going to uh, share a couple of questions that I uh, came across. So the first question is, astronomers need to identify the position of the object in the sky with a very high precision. For that, it is essential to have a coordinate system that specify the position of an object at a given time. One of them is equatorial coordinate system that is widely used in astronomy. To explain how the equatorial coordinate system works. So basically they are asking about the equatorial coordinate system. So in order to know about the equatorial coordinate system, we have to know what is a celestial sphere is. So you know what the scientists will do if they do know about any concept, they will just imagine something and with taking that as reference, uh, they will move further with their research. So likewise, they have imagined, they have created an imaginary sphere called celestial sphere, which surrounds the earth. And uh, for uh, finding any object in that celestial sphere, they have uh, made an coordinate system called equatorial coordinate system. So uh, this is just an, a projection of latitude and longitude. We all know about latitude and longitude, right? So the latitudes are the horizontal lines and the longitude are the uh, these straight lines. So the, when these intersections are uh, used to find any location in the earth. So the projection of this into the celestial sphere is known as equatorial coordinate system. Uh, we are using this equatorial coordinate system because in order to find any object, we need some coordinates. So in a celestial sphere, it is declination and right ascension. The projection of latitude is nothing but declination. It is measured in degrees. And the projection of longitude is known as right ascension, which is measured in hours. So the intersection will help you to find the object in the equatorial coordinate system. So what's so special about the equatorial coordinate system is it is independent of time and location. We all know like time and location both are interconnected and in order to find any location uh, we need time because based on the location the time will be changing. So uh, but in equatorial coordinate system it is uh, independent of time. So let me show you a video where they'll be explaining uh, the how the declination and right ascension have been marked. using a unique set of coordinates. To do that, let's first use an analogy. We know from Earth that we can take our own rotation axis and use that to divide the Earth along the equator into northern and southern hemispheres. That also means that we can now draw parallel lines to the equator, giving us what we call parallels of latitude. So we start at zero degrees at the equator and we arrive at 90 degrees north at the North Pole and 90 degrees south at the South Pole. Now, in addition to parallels of latitude measuring north and south, we also want to be able to measure from east to west. So by international agreement, the prime meridian is an imaginary line that goes through the North Pole, through Greenwich, England at the Royal Observatory, all the way down to the South Pole. And then we can simply measure east or west in terms of meridians of longitude. So, for example, here in Baltimore, we are at 39 degrees north latitude, 76 degrees west latitude. A southern example would be Cerro Paranel in Chile, that's 24 degrees south latitude or 70 degrees west. And Rome, Italy is 42 degrees north and 12 degrees east. So that places Rome at about the same latitude as Boston, Massachusetts. Now, that is how we define every location on Earth. And we're going to use an analogous system to define every location in the heavens. So let's bring our Earth inside of the celestial sphere. And we'll once again extend our north and south poles to form the north and south celestial poles. We'll extend the equator to form the celestial equator. And just as we did before with parallels of latitude, we can now draw parallel lines to the celestial equator, only we refer to these as parallels of declination. So we measure declination as zero degrees from the equator all the way up to positive 90 Hello? at the celestial pole, all the way down to negative 90 at the south celestial. 
Is there any problem no, no, during no, no. this? Continue. Continue. So pull. Now we cannot simply take our meridians and apply those to the sky as well. The reason for that is because the Earth is rotating and therefore the meridians would need to rotate as well and that would make such a system fairly useless to us. Instead, what we'll do is we'll take the annual path of the sun, the ecliptic, and we'll note the location that the sun is on in March when it arrives at the vernal equinox. Since the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, this gives us a 24-hour clock face that we can write onto the celestial equator. So when we draw parallel lines to this clock face, we then get hours of right ascension. So again, think of not so much as hours of time, but think of it instead as hours on a clock face. For example, Rigel in the constellation of Orion has a right ascension of a little more than five hours, about a quarter of the way onto the sixth hour circle. So that gives Rigel a right ascension of five hours and 15 minutes. And since it's south of the celestial equator, that gives us a declination of minus eight degrees and 12 minutes of arc. Remember, we can take a single degree and we can split that up into 60 minutes of arc. So this coordinate system, since it's based on the celestial equator, we call this the equatorial coordinate system. And it's a really convenient way for us to define every single point on the celestial sphere. So uh, this is how we are going, uh, scientists are tracking the location of any object that is present in the celestial sphere. And the B question, they are asking, what is the meaning of J2000 that often occurs together with the equatorial coordinates? And, um, you know, for uh, knowing anything, we need uh, to know about the reference first. So, so if someone asks me, where is my house? I, if I just say it's in Chitlapakam, they won't know what, where is my house is exactly. So I'll say it's near an early public school. So here I'm using that school's name as a reference. So in order to find anything, we will use uh, this reference. Even in, in for uh, in time period also, we will be using uh, BC and AD as the time uh, as a reference. So in astronomy, uh, they will be using uh, the standard epoch, which is known as a uh, Julian date, and that date is January one two thousand. So in short, uh, they are using as a, it as a J two thousand. And the next one is the object NGC 4440 is galaxy located at Virgo cluster at the following equatorial coordinates. So they have given the right ascension and declination. So, and they, they are asking uh, the Calor Alto Observatory is located in Spain at the geographical coordinates of, uh, and they, by here they are giving the latitude and longitude. And now they are asking whether this galaxy is observable from the Calor Alto Observatory. So for this, we are using an equation where h is the height and uh, 90 minus latitude plus declination. Here we are using latitude and declination because uh, as I said before, uh, latitude and declination both are same. So you can ask me why, why can't we use right ascension? Uh, it's because right ascension is measured in hours and longitude in degrees. So we can't, you know, we can't calculate both. So instead of that, we are using latitude and declination for our convenience purpose. And uh, so we have to subtract the sum with 90. And if the resultant we get is uh, greater than zero, which is a positive value, then the galaxy is observable. And if it is lesser than zero, which is a negative value we get, then it is not observable. So when I uh, substituted those values into this equation, I've got a positive value like 67 degrees or something. So hence it is uh, observable from that uh, observatory. And Let's talk now about a way that we... And the next question is, a total solar eclipse occurs when the moon moves between the earth and the sun and completely blocks out the sun. This phenomenon is very spectacular and attracts people from all cultures. However, Total solar eclipse can also take place in other planets of the solar system. Determine for each of the following moons if they can create a total solar eclipse. 
so they are asking whether uh, the mentioned moons like phobos callisto titan and oberon can uh, create a total solar eclipse here phobos is the moon of mars callisto is the moon of jupiter titan is the moon of saturn and oberon is the moon of uranus you know there are two types of solar eclipse uh, sorry two types of solar eclipse which is total solar eclipse and partial to, uh, solar eclipse so uh, in order to uh, understand this a uh, question we have to know what is a tot total solar eclipse is. so i'll show you a video for that so they have explained the concept behind uh, the total solar eclipse but they did this so many mathematical and you know physics equation behind it because you know the moon has to be in certain angle only then uh, they have this uh, will occur and the rays of from the sun should be in uh, in, in such manner so the um, angle of deflection should be uh, there are so many conditions in order to uh, construct a total solar eclipse but there is an easy equation through which we can find like ev can every moon can uh, uh, form a total solar eclipse for that i have mentioned some uh, alphabets so the capital d represent the distance between the sun and the earth and the capital r is the radius of the sun and the small r is the radius of the moon and uh, the small d is the distance between moon and the earth so uh, by substituting in this uh, equation and if the ratio between uh, the sun and the uh, distance between the earth is uh, lesser than the uh, ratio of the distance between the planet and the moon and the radius of the moon then the total solar eclipse will be the total solar eclipse will happen if this i mean uh, if this part is larger then the condition will be satisfied and the total solar eclipse will be uh, we can the moon can create the total solar eclipse and if this part is uh, bigger then the moon cannot uh, create a total solar eclipse so from the phobos callisto titan and oberon uh, only phobos can't cre uh, create a total solar eclipse and other three uh, can create thank you hey jagu hi so if you have any doubts jagu. you can ask reshma jagu what you told no two girls should join can they join target space I have they joined already, but uh, we need to check with them. Let them do their first uh, solo presentation, then we can take. Jagu, Jagu. Okay, okay, we. Okay. Reshmi, Reshma ji is the Reshmi. new person here. No, no, Reshma yeah. is the guest speaker. Guest speaker. She is part of oh, our uh, yeah. telemetry research okay. team in Vayu Shastra. So, okay, Jagu. Yes. 